Hey folks, my name is Derek Fisher, and I want to walk through a little bit of uh, threat modeling. We're going to use uh, OWASP's uh, Threat Dragon to do a threat model. There's other tools out there that exist. Uh, one of the other more popular ones is the Microsoft Threat Model tool. Um, but uh, OWASP Threat Dragon is pretty, pretty good one too. It's a little more intuitive and gives you a little more freedom, um, but either one's fine. Uh, but in this case, we're going to use uh, Threat Dragon. When we create a threat model, the first thing we're trying to understand is what does the system look like? What are the different components that are part of that system, the different interactions, the different boundaries? Um, and the whole goal there is to identify threats that exist within that system. So if you have a basic web application, uh, with a database and external access across the internet, then there's a lot of different threats that uh, are posed to that system. So creating a threat model will allow you to identify what those threats are and then put together a mitig mitigation or remediation strategy to try to address those threats. The last part of that too is to validate that the mitigation remediation uh, are effective and that the threats are actually real. Um, so in some cases you might identify threats that just don't apply. So the first thing that you wanna do is create a diagram. And you want to start out with a large whiteboard if you're doing this in a group setting. And what you want to do is draw out the architecture. Now, if you're doing this by yourself, you can just go right into the tool and build out the diagram within the tool. Uh, you can do it in PowerPoint. You could do it in Visio. You could do it in any kind of drawing application as well uh, if you don't have a whiteboard. The diagram should be as in-depth as possible, but you don't want to create an eye chart. You don't want to make something that's uh, so uh, large uh, that you know it's unwieldy and you're not able to actually get anywhere with it. You know, one of the rules of thumb that I try to use is that if I don't have, uh, or if the organization uh, doesn't have control over how to mitigate a threat with that given part of the system, then it doesn't necessarily need to be in scope. Maybe the interaction has to be there. So for instance, maybe you uh, work with a a third party that is calling your API. You can't control the code on that third party. Uh, therefore, any threats that exist at that third, in that third party, for instance, maybe that third party uh, has an exposure to cross-site scripting or something like that. Well, you can't fix that. So it, it, it isn't in scope. Now, the interaction of that third party calling your API is absolutely in scope. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. So some of the things you want to consider, obviously a scope, you want to make sure that you have all the pieces that are part of the of the system identified in the model. You wanna identify the different actors and the abusers that might interact with your system. You wanna get all the system components, database, uh, web application servers, um, any kind of uh, load balancers and different configuration files that might be on file systems and so forth. You wanna create, you wanna understand and identify all the different processes and data flows that are part of the system. And then any kind of backup or monitoring or logging uh, components that are part of the system as well. Because again, all those things will, will come into play. So one thing to keep in mind about the, the scoping though is that you wanna make sure that you're creating this threat model, which is a diagram, and uh, it's basically an architecture diagram. So you wanna boil down the workflows to something uh, as small as you can. So you don't wanna create you know, large workflows. Uh, unless, of course, it's, you know, makes sense. But the purpose of scoping small is so that you can work on a, a given uh, area um, and actually get to the end of the threat model. Uh, if you have a large model uh, with a lot of different um, components in it, it's going to be difficult for you to be able to uh, tackle that whole thing. Uh, you know, like the common phrase of how do you eat an elephant? Uh, you do it one bite at a time. So you want to try to scope it as small as possible so you can concentrate on small areas, get to a, a finished uh, um, threat uh, threat model, and then uh, be able to move on. So the diagram must help you understand and discuss you know, the system security considerations. Uh, the diagram should contain the items determined in the scope. And if you miss something, it's okay. Uh, threat models are, are living documents. So there are things that uh, you will be able to go back to and update, change as things, as you learn something new. Again, we're gonna use OWASP Threat Dragon and for this. So here's a, a mock-up of a simple web application. And you're gonna see a user and an admin, uh, and then that dotted line is a boundary. Uh, they go through the web server, which then goes to the app server, which then goes to a database. Uh, sorry, that's a typo there. Uh, but it then goes to the database. But the important thing here is to draw, make sure you have boundaries that you include uh, all the components of the system. Now, again, this is a very, very simple web application. Obviously, this is just for demo purposes. Um, a true threat model is going to be much more uh, robust 
than this. So now that you have the diagram, you wanna start looking at what can go wrong. And there's a couple different threat modeling frameworks. And so one of the most popular ones, or I, I shouldn't say popular, but one of the more common ones is STRIDE. And uh, STRIDE stands for spoofing, tampering, repudiation, information disclosure, denial of service, and elevation of privileges. And so it classifies threats into those, uh, those six categories. So spoofing is somebody being able to impersonate an account. Tampering is uh, changing data so that it's not uh, in the original form it was in. Repudiation is being able to tie back an activity to a given uh, account or user. Information disclosure is confidentiality breach. Denial of service is an availability breach. And then elevation of privileges is being able to escalate or elevate a user's uh, privilege to a higher level in order to uh, perform additional tasks. So let's take a look at Threat Dragon. It's a pretty simple uh, tool. Again, it's pretty intuitive, but what we're gonna do here is uh, get started with a completely new empty threat model. I'm just gonna create a new model here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just call this my web app. Uh, owner is me, reviewer is Jane Doe, and system description, we're just going to call this um, website for cat pictures. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and add a new diagram, we'll just call this the web app, add it, save. All right, so you see here that it's going to create this uh, diagram uh, that you can then open and it's a blank canvas. It's uh, in stride right now, meaning that's the way we're going to categorize these vulnerabilities or these threats that we find. So first thing I'm going to do is put down uh, two actors. I want to have a, a basic user. And I'm going to have an admin uh, that's able to log into the site to make changes. I'm put down two processes. I'm going to make this the uh, uh, web server. I'm going to make this the app server. And I'm going to put down a store, which is going to be the database. I'm gonna put down a trust boundary. So obviously uh, the access is gonna be over the internet. Okay. So what you wanna do is because the user is gonna be accessing the web server, uh, it's pretty simple to do this here with Threat Dragon is you're able to just click on the arrow here. It's gonna say, select another part of the model. And there you go. And then I'm gonna create another flow that goes between the web server and the app server. Another one that goes back to the database. Same thing here. Um, and uh, there you go. That's your basic threat model. Now, in order to manage threats, first thing we can do is, let's say we wanna look at the threats on the web server. We can add stride elements to this. And it's going to give you just basically generic uh, elevation of privileges. And you can see here it says one of six. So it's going to add all of the stride category threats uh, to this. So I'm not going to step through each one of them here, but um, we're going to accept a basic or a generic elevation of privileges. We'll accept the basic spoofing and so forth. You can click do this for your remaining. It's going to add them all. And so you'll see here that elevation of privileges, you know, spoofing, tampering, uh, repudiation, information disclosure, denial of service, and elevation of privileges. So stride are, have all been added. And you can take a look at this and say, yeah, this is spoofing attack here on the web server. Um, you can add additional description here. Uh, if you have it mitigated here, we'll say that um, we have uh, MFA um, enabled and um, strong authentication. and say mitigated, save, and it's gonna mark it as being mitigated. Now you could also add uh, your own threats. Let's say uh, the web server, um, I wanna add a, another threat. So I can say add new threat. Let's say the um, admin 
credentials. I know this is kind of contradictory to what I just put there, but credentials are shared and static. So it never changes, it's shared. Um, in this case, that would be a uh, spoofing. Um, you could, because there's no accountability. Uh, you could say it's spoofing, you could say it's repudiation, depending on uh, the case here. But um, if the credentials are shared and it gets loose within the organization, you could say it's also possibly elevation of privileges if it goes to, if a non-admin user is able to gain access to that. So I'm just gonna, again, just for demo purposes here, I'm just gonna add this. And we could say here that uh, MFA, you know, again, is, is the mitigation, um, which again, I'm just showing this here as an example. These are all just uh, samples here, but uh, MFA enabled, so therefore it's mitigated, okay? And so you would be able to do this with the remainder of your, the remainder of the threat model here. You can mark things out of scope. Um, just put in your uh, reason for being out of scope if you are gonna do that. Uh, there is some opportunity here to add privilege levels and things like that. The store uh, has additional components that you're able to uh, add to reduce uh, reduce threats or show that the, some of the threats might be mitigated and so forth. But again, this is just a simple way of doing a quick and dirty uh, threat model and be able to track the mitigations that are there. And so with that, I hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough and um, have a good day. Thank you.